In addition to stochastic volatility, a uh, standard way to extend black shows to more general, more realistic models is to introduce jumps into the stock price. There are many models with jumps. There are books on uh, models with jumps in financial mathematics or option pricing. Uh, we, this is way uh, above the level of this course. The mathematics is different than with Brown in motion, except it's a little bit similar in, in what are called jump diffusion models. So there are two main uh, jump models. One is jump diffusion models, where you just add jumps to, to your Brownian motion model. And the other one uh, are models in which maybe there is no Brownian motion, but there are frequent jumps all the time, a continuous time model, but jumps, small jumps all the time. Uh, usually those are uh, done uh, through so-called Levy models. Uh, I'm not going to do those. Those are completely different mathematically. Uh, they are used in, in theory and in practice, but uh, you know, it just gets uh, much harder mathematically. Economic ideas are still the same. I'm going to just give you a brief taste of how uh, jumps are introduced in jump diffusion models. And this is a model uh, which goes way back, and there are now more popular models, but this one is the easiest to explain. It's Merton's model. It goes back to the 70s. Uh, and if you know a little bit about stochastic processes and, and in particular modeling, modeling random times, the easiest way to mo model random intervals of time is using exponential distribution, uh, independent exponential distributions, and then something happens after each exponentially long time. Exponentially long meaning uh, distributed according to the uh, drawn from uh, an exponential distribution, the length of the period. And uh, in this case, with uh, stock prices and jumps, what you would do, uh, you would model the time between jumps as exponentially distributed random variables. And then each at the end of each interval, there is a jump in the price. Okay? So that's called the Poisson process. Poisson process would count is a counting process. It would count number of jumps after first exponential time, one jump, two, and so on. Two jumps after two periods, and so on. So you have to model that, and then you also have to model the size of the jump, and uh, that you can, you know, model with whatever distribution you want. Uh, but if you are modeling uh, the, the factor by which you change the price as a log normal distribution, then actually you can compute the formula for pricing options. And this is, this is what Merton did. I'm going to sketch it here without going into details. Okay. So n of t here is the notation for this uh, Poisson process, which uh, counts the number of jumps. It is known from probability theory that having k jumps up to time t, the probability of that is given by the so-called Poisson distribution, which is given here. It has a parameter lambda, which corresponds to the frequency of jumps. And then how would you model the stock price? You would have, and I'm going to do it uh, indirectly under the pricing probability. Uh, this is going to be an incomplete model. So in principle, there are many pricing probabilities. But I'm just going to assume there is one that the market uses for pricing. And uh, I'm going to model under that one. There is R D T as before, and there is S sigma D W Q as before as in Black Scholes, Merton. I am subtracting here something from from R, uh, which with some constant M, which is chosen so that if you discount, you get a martingale. The reason for that is that I'm adding here jumps, and jumps are not martingales, so I have to subtract something to make this minus this a martingale. Uh, okay, so this dj just means jumps. So these are actually discrete. This dj is not infinitesimal, it's a discrete jump. Uh, okay, so that's the, the model. And more particularly, how we model jumps is by a factor by which the price jumps after, uh, after 
the jump happens after a Poisson event. Okay, so that's going to be described or modeled by random variables x1, x2, and so on. So the first jump comes, you multiply your stock uh, by x1. Then the second jump comes, you multiply by x2, which comes from the same distribution independently of x1. So actually, you can write the formula for the stock price in such a model. This part is the same as in Black-Scholes, except there is this extra term here, but otherwise it's the same as 0 times this exponential. And then you multiply as many times with random, vari random variables xi as there were jumps and there, there were here n of t jumps. Okay. So you go like this. As long as there is no jump, forget about x's, you have s of 0 times this. First jump comes, you multiply by x1. Then you move your t forward, 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 until the next jump comes, you multiply by x2, and so on. OK, so there is actually an explicit formula. That's how the stock price would look like in this model. Now, who to, how to find the price of an option? So there is a trick, a standard trick from probability theory, which if you know, this is going to be easy for you to understand. If you don't know it, uh, it's, it's, we don't have time really to, to do that. So you can kind of just skip the rest of this and the next slide. It's not going to be in the, in the problems. Um, but if you, if you want to follow this, so what the standard trick is to condition on the number of jumps that happened up to maturity. So it can be k, where k can be anything from 0 to infinity. And then you add overall those possibilities. You compute expected value of a discounted payoff at maturity over all possibilities for the number of jumps. But then you have to weight every such expectation with the probability that in indeed there were exactly k jumps up to maturity. And here you're doing it with the q probability because everything is under q. Okay? So that's, and that's q probability is actually, I wrote it in the previous slide as p, but really in my model, uh, pricing model, this is going to be q. Okay, lambda is the lambda under q. Everything is under Q. Okay, so so that's the trick. You condition on the number of jumps, find conditional expectations given that, and then times times the probability that probability from the previous slide that the number of jumps was k. But why why does this help? Because this now, once you know the number of jumps, you know you know there's going to be a k here. You know exactly how your stock price looks like. In particular, if these guys x's are also exponentials of Brian of normal distribution, uh, then you just have a, a fact a, a multiplication of exponentials of, of normal distributions, which is going to be an exponential of a normal distribution. And you can actually compute. If you can compute in black scholes merton without jumps, you can compute here too. Yeah? These expectations, if you can compute them without jumps, you can compute them here too, assuming that uh, your x's are also exponentials to a uh, normal distribution. So that's that's what uh, Merton did. He assumed that these x's are also coming from a log normal distribution. You multiply by these probabilities. So it's more or less explicit formula if you can compute this in Black Scholes, except it's infinite an infinite series. But then usually it's going to converge after a certain number of uh, iterations. So uh, you don't really you're not in practice going to use infinite series. You're going to cut it off at some point, And it should work numerically if you go far enough. Okay, so that's how, in general, it looks like. The price of this in this Merton's uh, jump diffusion model is an infinite combination, infinite linear combination of Black-Scholes prices with some weights. There are some adjustments here. If you do it carefully, you actually have to ch change lambda tilde to lambda 1 plus that constant m. And also black Scholes prices with some specific interest rate and some specific volatility, which 
take some algebra to compute what they are, but it can be all computed a and you do have a formula. It's an infinite weighted sum of Black Scholes type formulas. Okay, so uh, effectively for practical purposes, what happens, you have replaced a one parameter model where the parameter is sigma with, in this case, a three parameter model. You have lambda and you have m also. Uh, and uh, <coughs> so you get a more flexible model. It can uh, fit the data better because you have three parameters, not one, uh, still not too many parameters. And, uh, and it has some economic justification behind it. So maybe it makes economic sense when you fit it to the data, maybe you're going to get good fit. As I said, this particular model uh, is a bit outdated. There are better jump models out there, uh, more, more popular ones. Uh, but this one was uh, the first one and also uh, relatively easy to describe. All right, that's all I'm going to say about jumps.